My dear friends in life, show and cherish the gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet him with these words of eternal life. Come, you blessed of my Father. In baptism, show and receive the sign of the cross. May he now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, be with you all. Eternal rest uh, grant unto Sean, O Lord, let perpetual light shine upon him. My dear friends, um, on behalf of myself and Father Michael, the people of the parish of Kilmacabe and indeed all associated with Myrus Wood, which I know was um, so well supported by Sean and Rosaline and the family and all uh, who worked in Myros over the years. We extend our very, very sincere sympathy uh, to you, Sean's family, on this day as we prepare to lay him uh, to rest. Uh, to Rosaline, his wife, uh, to Miriam, to Tim and uh, Gemma and Laura, and we especially uh, send our love and our sincere sympathy uh, to Gemma and to Laura on today. To Julie, uh, Sean's daughter-in-law. To his sons-in-law, Barry and Alan and Steve. To his brother, Vin, his sisters, Vera and uh, Teresa. To his grandchildren, to his nephews, nieces, extended family to his kind neighbours and his many close and dear friends. We extend our very, very sincerest sympathy. In this Mass as well, we pray for the repose of the soul of Sean's parents, Timothy and Kitty, as well as his sisters, Mary and Nellie. No doubt they are now in each other's company, sharing stories, Sean telling them once again how the family are doing. And as we are praying for them, we believe that the dead go no further than next to us. And Sean is very much with us here this morning as we pray for him. And so we ask him to also pray for us. We begin our Mass this morning and I welcome Adam as we remember some of the symbols from um, Sean's life. And so Adam, if you'd like to come forward, please. So just behind you on the seat, Adam. Yeah, that's it. Perfect. And so we have a copy of the newspaper. I'm told that uh, Sean Daly read the examiner from front to back page. Thanks, Adam. Just on the table there. Thank you. And we bring a book of the Roscarbury Historical Society. Uh, Sean was both a founder and a member, a man who loved things old and things new. We bring a bale or twine, uh, Sean, among the many, many talents he had, uh, made many, many a rope, and this is but a symbol of his work. We bring his peaked cap. I suppose the peaked cap is most associated with a people who loved the country and lived in the country, and we bring uh, Sean's peak cap. I'm sure he probably even went to bed wearing it. So uh, this is, um, we lay this on the table as well before the altar. And uh, last but not least, we bring a photograph of Sean and Rosaline. Together in life, always um, never distant from each other. Uh, their love story, we'll hear of it today. And I know that they got married in the eternal city of Rome. And they've been together for so many, many, many years, sharing both ups and downs. And um, we 
again uh, commend um, you today to Almighty God, Rosaline, in particular. You've lost not only the man that you loved, but also your very, very best friend. And so we bring the photograph of you and Sean before the altar on today. Thanks very much, Adam. And so, dear friends, uh, the lengths of life uh, that we live, some are very fortunate to grow into old age, and um, Sean was indeed one of those fortunate few. What we leave behind, the legacy we leave behind, is how we are remembered. And so, as we come in, Sean, uh, to Almighty God in this morning, we'll pause a moment. Uh, we'll thank Almighty God for the gift uh, that was shown as we commend him and as we pray for each other and especially for those who mourn his passing. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy upon us. May he forgive us our sin. May he lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully granted through this mystery, your servant Sean, who was fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And now we'll have the readings, please. A reading from the book of Ecclesiasticus. There is a season for everything, a time for every occupation under heaven, a time for giving birth, a time for dying, a time for planting, a time for uprooting what has been planted, a time for killing, a time for healing, a time for knocking down, a time for building, a time for tears, a time for laughter, a time for mourning, a time for dancing, a time for throwing stones away, a time for gathering them up, a time for embracing, a time to refrain for embracing, a time for searching, a time for losing, a time for keeping, a time for throwing away, a time for tearing, a time for sowing, a time for keeping silent, a time for speaking, a time for loving, and a time for peace. This is the word of the Lord.
silent, earth is at rest, only your peace is near me. Yes, you are always close to me. The second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. John. Think of the love that the Father has lavished on us by letting us be called God's children. And that is what we are. My dear people, we are already the children of God. But what we are to be in the future has not yet been revealed. All we know is that when it is revealed, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he really is. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. You have the message of eternal life. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is my Father's glory that you bear much fruit showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me. No, I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends, um, since um, Sean's death was announced a couple of days ago, his name has been mentioned in so many households in so many parts of the country. A testament uh, to a man who loved life, loved family, loved people and even went as far as the west of Ireland to find the love of his life in the beautiful county of Roscommon. It's an extraordinary thing in life, isn't it, how much we can influence people by being simply ourselves. 
and from all, and I didn't have the honour of knowing Sean, from all that I've heard about him in the last couple of days, perhaps the best description I've heard was, he was a good man. And that's an incredible legacy to leave to family and neighbour and friend. When uh, Tim came to speak to me the, the other evening and uh, spoke of his dad and of all that he had achieved, I thought of a man who I dearly love and whose words this morning perhaps speak eloquently of Sean and of the memories or some of them that Sean's family holds. And that man is a man who also knew the land and who knew the difficulties of making a living from the land. And that man is Patrick Kavanagh, the great poet of Monaghan. I want to share some words that Patrick Kavanagh wrote in honour of his mother, but I'm sure as well that they could apply to Sean this morning. And this is what Kavanagh writes. I do not think of you lying in the wet clay of a Monaghan graveyard. I see you walking down a lane among the poplars on your way to the station or happily going to second mass on a summer Sunday. You meet me and you say, don't forget to see about the cattle. Among your earthiest words, the angels stray. And I think of you walking along a headland of green oats in June, so full of repose, so rich in life. And I see us meeting at the end of town on a fair day by accident. After the bargains are all made and we can walk together through the shops and stalls and markets free in the oriental streets of thought. Oh, you are not lying in the wet clay for it is harvest and now we are piling up the reeks against the moonlight and you smile up at us eternally. May a slow wind work these memories around you, an invisible cloak to comfort you in your sorrow and your grief. There is a line in that very beautiful Gospel of St. John and that says, I have called you friends. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go out and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Sean has ended up where his life began, in God's church, as God's child, as God's friend. And we are born into this world with our fists clenched tight. We leave this world with open hand. And we have little idea at this side of eternal life, the good that Sean did while he lived. We only have reminders. And so, dear friends, I ask you today a very important question. How will you remember Sean? This morning is so critically important to all that you and, and I believe about faith and trust and hope and joy and good and evil and life and death. Every prayer we say, every blessing we give and receive, every truth of our faith that we recite and decreed, every hope that we hold and belief that we have about a Jesus Christ, Sean carried through his life 
and carry this well. And this uh, simple belief says that uh, God can be trusted. Suffering will be vindicated. Death will be overcome. Eternal life to reward of all who hear the word of God and act on that word in their lives. Sean did all of that abundantly well. And we need to be assured, dear friends, and reassured that Jesus Christ can be found in the darkest of places in human life. For in the end, all of this is fairly simply, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Not time, not space, not even death. Since Sean was faithful to Christ, Christ will be faithful to Sean. An unknown poet, and I'll finish on this, offers these words. Is there a relief upon the trees the Father does not see? The leaves fall, and so do we all return to earth to sod. Sparrow and king, and all manner of things fall, fall into the hands of the living God. Our brother Sean has fallen, but he has been caught, and now he is at peace and rest, surrounded by the love of God, his parents, his sisters, his neighbours and friends, Eternal rest, a grant unto Sean, O Lord, that perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, dear friends, we'll have the prayers of the faithful. We pray for Rose, whose love and devotion to Sean was an inspiration to all who witnessed it. We pray for Gemma, Laura and their families, whose hearts are broken so far away. On this sad day, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the wonderful friends and neighbours who have brought such joy, news and laughter to Sean and Rose over the years. Sean had so many friends who will mourn his passing. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that you, Lord, will give us the strength mentally and spiritually to overcome the strains of the COVID-19 global pandemic and keep us all safe. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for Sean's deceased family members, especially his parents, Timothy and Kitty, sisters, Mary and Nelly. We also pray for Sean's deceased neighbours and friends. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those who helped care for Sean over the past few months, especially in recent weeks. The staff of GA Ward and CUH and the staff of Marymount Hospice. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And so we'll pause, dear friends, as we ask our Blessed Lady, our Mother, to pray for us and with us as we commend Sean to Almighty God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brother. 
Cleanse him of any of his human faults and failings. Grant him the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for and through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth and the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. And by the mystery of this water and wine will we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself and to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for it through your goodness and we have received the wine we offer you. The fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin and heal me from the brokenness of my humanity. Pray, dear friends, that your sacrifice and mine I might be acceptable to God and the Almighty Father. <clears throat> Amen. As we humbly present to you uh, these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Sean, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. I make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them and like the dew fall, that a day may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. O oh, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, O oh, take this, uh, all of you, and eat of it, for uh, this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, O oh, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread, and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Fintan, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all your holy people. Remember your servant, Sean, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all the glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Gwimish kondanahar fwi maravuin ar stani ar duin a yenav. Or nahir atar niav ganif adanam, gadaga da riacht ganit in the heller and talav, mar nyintar ar niav, or naron lehu il tu ar duin in you, agas ma duin ar viakla, Marawahamid Darve Kunya Fain, Osnadik Shini Gahu, Oxair Shin, O Walk. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And we'll say the prayer for peace together. A Lord of Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And we'll just pause, dear friends. And we'll ask for that gift of gifts, and particularly for all who grieve and mourn Sean's passing, and especially those who aren't able to be physically with us on it this morning. For Lord Jesus Christ, bring eternal life to us uh, who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. And behold the Lamb of God, behold uh, the Jesus of the Gospel, our resurrection and life, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. O oh, blessed are those who are called uh, to the supper of the Lamb. A oh, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep all of us safe uh, for eternal life. And so if you'd like to stay in your seats, I'll bring Holy Communion to you. So 
consider all the works thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving, O be every moment thine. Let perpetual light shine upon Sean with your saints forever, for you are merciful, eternal rest to grant unto him, O Lord. Let perpetual light shine upon him with your saints forever, for you are merciful. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully granted, strengthened by it, our brother Sean, may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Now, dear friends, before the final commendation, I'd like to welcome Miriam and Tim uh, to offer some words on behalf of all the family and in memory of Sean. Sean O'Mahony, to those who know him, was a man who was economical with his words, and today I will endeavour to keep in his footsteps in this regard. Sean was born in 1932, the fourth child and the second son to Timothy and Kitty O'Mahony. He left school aged 14 
and worked for a time in the flax mills in Canada, and he attended Agricultural College in Athenry. His brother Ben and he grew up as passionate and keen farmers. He was introduced to Rosaline, his love, by Julia Mary Hayes at a dance in Onahentia, and they got married in Rome on the 4th of June, 1973. They had four children in the next five years, Miriam, Tim, Gemma and Laura. They had a loving marriage and a happy home for the next 47 years, a home of simple values, of love, respect and faith. He never had a cross word or a bad thing to say, ever. I have written some words that I believe capture the essence of our dad's life, and it's called The Message. He looked back before he left this world and head on to the next. It was a life well lived, uncomplicated, just with simple ways. Rising early, farming called him, milking cows he could be found. In every season and all weathers, tinkering on tractors, fencing, welding, he loved the land, the milking parlour, feeding calves, cups of tea after. Flat cap and dirty wellies, his usual attire. A rope hanging off him, or a piece of baler twine. Devoted to his rose and his brood of four, day trips on Sunday, after mass, of course. Trips to Dunmanway for swims in the winter. Castle Freak woodwalks, steam rallies or regattas. Reading the examiner from cover to cover. Sleep often followed, papers thrown all over. A man of strong faith, brown beads in his hands, many novenas said in Myris with man. Pints in the beehive with Mickey and Jim, or dancing with Rose Sunday nights in Skib. Kilmacabee's matches were eagerly seen, trips to the theatre dragging a teen. He loved to travel on trips to the sun, or a pilgrimage to Knock or sometimes Killarney for fun. His heart was loving. He was so authentic, a true gentleman, that he could also cry a tear or two. Twelve grandkids, his legacy, how he loved to watch them grow, laughing in the transport box, jostling as they go. As he glanced back, he saw everyone that he knew, saw their grief, love and sorrow, and knew what to do. He embraced his family and sent them a message. I'm going now to heaven. My soul is so free. I'm watching over you. I live on in you all, you see. On behalf of the O'Mahony family, I'd like to thank Father Terry and Father Michael for a, a very, very special and intimate Mass. Um, it was lovely and we very much appreciate it. To the doctors of Ross Carberry Medical Centre who always took care of Dad, Dr Martin, Dr Wilson, all the nursing staff uh, and staff of the Medical Centre, thanks. They took great care of both my parents We'd also like to say thanks to Dad's brilliant home help, especially Noreen, Breda, Helen and Anne, and also the public health nurses. I'd like to acknowledge and pay a huge uh, thank you to Jor and Finn Shannon. They were very sympathetic, kind and to us in these very difficult days, and they were very professional. We thanked them sincerely. I want to say thanks to a man who I have yet to meet, and I'll thank him after James Harley for streaming this. It's hugely important to our, our two sisters, Jim and Laura, and their husbands and children. So we're, we're very grateful for that uh, in these difficult times. 
we received many kind messages of support and sympathy from friends, family, neighbours. It has given us great strength to hear all the positive outpouring of affection for dead. Sincere thanks, thanks to everyone near and far for those messages. I'd also like to acknowledge the messages of condolence from our cousins in Roscommon, Mead, Dublin, Kerry and in the UK. We know that you're with us in spirit. To Dad, on behalf of his grandchildren, Adam, Luke, Alex, Shane, Aoife, Finn, Mary Jo, Sean, Connor, Isabel, Bridget, and Rory. Thank you for being a great granddad. We all love you and we'll really miss you. It was very touching and uplifting as well to see all the people lining the route of the funeral cortege today, all our friends, neighbours from near and far. I know you'd all like to be with us in, inside here and shaking hands and give us hugs and kisses and reminiscing. We know, we know that you're with us in spirit. Please God, someday we can sit down together and celebrate dead together in, and share stories and reminisce and properly celebrate him together. There was a lovely guard of honour coming in the church. I'd like to say thank you from all the family to everybody who participated. Lastly, I, I, I haven't this scripted, but I would just like to say that I had the privilege of working with my father every day of my life. Everything that Marim said about him is true. He was a great, humble person. He loved life. He had tremendous spirit. Everything I, I am, I learned from him. And so did my sisters. He took great care of my mother. They were so devoted. I couldn't say enough about him. All I'd say to his dad, God bless, good night, and we'll meet again. And now, dear friends, before the final blessing, I'd like to welcome Father Michael. And Father Michael will lead us in the prayers of commendation. The Lord be with you. And let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Sean. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Sean in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give thanks to you for the blessings which you bestowed on him in this life, 
they are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with our assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with our brother, Sean, forever. In peace now let us take our brother to his place of rest. 